know that song i don't want to know what they talk about if you plan me keep it on the low it's basically saying that somebody's in a relationship and even though they getting cheated on they don't want to know about it because they don't want to get hurt by what they find out now this is a different scenario with us as ravens fans because you know we in a relationship with the baltimore ravens and while they're not cheating on us they certainly hurt us from the information that got revealed about the game yesterday and for some of this you almost don't want to know about it. But since we know about it, we got to talk about it. So, uh, Jonah Schaefer, just this morning, he tweeted out that the Ravens had seven drops on Sunday, according to True Media. And this is tied for the third most, not just by any Ravens team, but by any NFL team since 2013. So, since any team in the league, since 2013, the Ravens had the third most drops. So they out here breaking records. Anyway, he said the final breakdown was Mark Andrews had three drops. Zay Flowers had two drops. Rashad Bateman had one drop and Nelson Aguilar had one drop. Now, no, no, I, I actually disagree with these numbers because I feel like the Ravens had eight. Because Lamar Jackson on a perfect pass, all, and all of these were perfect passes, by the way. But Lamar Jackson on a perfect pass to Rashad Bateman uh, down the sideline. It was a deep pass. Rashad Bateman let it slip right through his hands. But you know what? I guess it's not considered a drop uh, since he never even caught the ball in the first place. Uh, so... Uh, it was just a real frustrating game. As y'all know, y'all were there. We all watched it live together, and there was a lot of pain involved in that game. And I'm like, is this real? Are all these drops still happening? And it's crazy because through the first four weeks, through the first four games, the Ravens re receivers had a total of five drops. Total in four games. But then in this fifth game, they're like, you know what? Let's blow that out the water. We're going to drop everything today. And... To me, I still believe that that was the Achilles heel of that game yesterday. But anyway, continuing. Uh, now, this is the part that really stung even more than, well, just as much as the drops. Uh, well, you know what? No, not as much as the drops, but it hurt a lot. Because a lot of Ravens fans were questioning, why did the Ravens go for it at that point of the field? It was fourth and two. Uh, it was a little before halftime. Why not just kick the field goal? Why not just take the points? Now, me, I was good either way. I get why they were going for it because everything was right in front of them. Uh, but at the same time, it would have been cool if they would have kicked the field goal too. And a lot of Ravens fans were like, oh, that's going to come back to bite them. It's going to come back. Uh, and it didn't, but still, I mean, it could have changed how a lot of the end of the game went. But still, it, it did hurt not taking points, and they had an opportunity, but that opportunity was explained why they actually went for the fourth down conversion. Harbaugh said the plan was to kick the field goal, but he said that there was a miscommunication. Lamar Jackson was not expecting the snap. And what was that miscommunication? Well, let's hear from Tyler Linderbaum. He said uh, the fourth and two was on him. He said the plan was to let the clock roll down and take a timeout and then kick it. But when he saw a Steelers jump, he snapped the ball. So Tyler Linderbaum, he went a little bit rogue on that one. He was like, you know what? I'm going to do my own thing. And, and look, I, I get it. He was trying to – he felt like they had an easy first down uh, because he saw a Steelers player jump, and he thought, hey, maybe they jumping off sides. Maybe we catch them slipping, and we get them five yards because it's fourth and two. Oh, first down. We get another shot at the, uh, at the touchdown. Let's go. But looking at the replay uh, on that play – the Steelers player, he wasn't even close to offsides. And, and again, I get Tyler Linderbaum just thinking on his feet, um, but it's like you – see, th this is where that part right – something like that, that would be on coaching in my opinion. Now, I'm not sitting here uh, talking about, oh, hey, fire Harbaugh, fire Harbaugh for, for this game yesterday because – a lot of it was not on him. And, and y'all know me. <laughs> I'll let you know gladly if I feel like it's on hardball and what I feel like is on hardball because we, we don't pull no punches with that, with none of that. But when it comes to a lot of the, like the drops, Harbaugh don't control the drops. He don't control that. That's all, that's all execution. Lamar did his part. The offensive line did their part on those plays. And perfect passes. Just drop, drop balls. They, they, they kept dropping them all game long. Drop, 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 drop. Drop three touchdowns. Rashad Bateman dropped the touchdown. Mark Andrews dropped the touchdown. Nelson Aguilar dropped the touchdown. That's points. That's 14 points right there. And really, uh, 18 points that's dropped. But it was 14 points because two of those touchdowns were dropped on the same drive. So that's you, 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 you hurt yourself with stuff like that. But now this, this whole thing with Tyler Linderbaum, it's like that if the miscommunication... And, and look, we get it. Even though Harbaugh's been coaching for a long time, since 2008, we know there's still going to be hiccups. There's still going to be bumps in the road. We get that. But if if there's a, a miscommunication, timeouts are of the essence. It's very, it's very important to try to, especially in, what is this, his 15th year coaching? Because 2008 now is 2023. 
it's important to make sure things are clear with your players, especially in a game like this, especially in a game like this. Because if the plan was to let the clock roll down, that, that plan needs to be executed. And you got to let, let it be known to your guys like, hey, this is what we're doing. This is what needs to be done. Like, I, I would get one thing if he went roll like, while the play is already happening. Like, all right. Like, if it was a player that did something, uh, like, on the fly. Like, whether it's Lamar, whether it's Zay, whether it's Mark Andrews, one of those guys like that. But an offensive lineman going rogue, that's dangerous. That's very dangerous. He said Lamar Jackson wasn't even expecting a snap. So, that just – so, if he wasn't expecting a snap, Zay Flowers wasn't expecting – nobody was expecting anything. That is so dangerous, man. And you see how it, it took away points because they were, they were trying to drain a clock and then call timeout and then – but so it, it happens. But it shouldn't happen. Uh, so that just – again, that, that just made the loss. When I saw that, I said, ooh, <laughs> Linda Flinder. Hey, we still love you, Linda. It's all good. But it's – with the Baltimore Ravens, like somebody said yesterday in the live stream, if it ain't one thing, it's another. This, this team is the definition of it's always something. Now – all hope is not lost. Uh, the season is not done. Uh, they, they are three and two after five games. It could be a lot better. They could be five and zero. Oh. Could be a lot worse. They could be zero oh and five, and they could be a lot of other things. But they are sitting at three and two right now, so the season is not done. Now, I, I know this week. I know views for Baltimore Ravens content creators are going to be way down because that's what happens. The after the Ravens lose, after the Ravens lose, people just be like, you know what? I don't want to look at any type of Ravens content. I don't want to see, hear, read, talk about the Baltimore Ravens whatsoever because they frustrate me so much. So I'm not logging on to YouTube. I'm not clicking on Team Keep It Clean video. I'm not watching them, and they do it with a lot of other people too. So, but, and we get it. It's, it's okay. Well, it's not okay, but it is what it is. Uh, but however you deal with it, you deal with it. Now, now, how I deal with it, shout out to my guy Irv and his family. Shout out to him, his wife, his kids, his entire family, because they out in Hawaii, and they sent us some real cool snacks, man. And that's going to help us deal with the loss even more. They sent it to our P.O. box. They sent gummy bears. Gummy bears are my absolute favorite. Uh, they sent these uh, Lee Hing gummy bears and these pineapple gummy bears. I, I could eat gummy bears all day, for real. They sent sliced mango. Um, they sent uh, Fury Cake Mix. I'm sure I said it the wrong way. It's probably called Fury Kaki Mix. I, I, I know I, I pronounced it the wrong way. They sent Fancy Japan Mix Candy. Uh, they sent Lee Hing Sour Patch Kids. Uh, and they sent Hot Cuttlefish, too. They sent it all. So I, I, I appreciate y'all a lot. So that's going to make taking this Ravens loss a lot better. But then he wasn't done there. Because uh, he also sent these shirts to our P.O. box. Now, uh, my favorite shirt ever, my favorite Baltimore Ravens shirt that I've ever gotten, it came from my guy Herb and his family from Hawaii. And the shirts that they make over there, the quality is just amazing. Like, this is another one that he sent. This is a newer one that he sent. Say Baltimore Ravens, purple pain, purple pain. Uh, so that that's beautiful. But he also sent another one, too. So he sent the, the, the white version of that shirt, and then he also sent the black version. You know, I'll be trying to look a little slimmer, so I'm going to probably wear the black one a little more. But it's all good. But I, I, I appreciate this so much, man. I, I, I really do because this, like, this is a nice reminder that it's bigger than the game of football, man. I always talk about how um, even af after a win, great, amazing, but after a loss especially, don't, just don't let it ruin your day don't let it steal your joy we watching this game as entertainment we watching the baltimore ravens as fun or whatever team you root for because i know it's not just ravens fans that watch this channel so whatever team it is that you root for it's all in fun and we get emotionally invested in these games we get emotionally involved in these games and following our team we have so much fun doing it but it's important to keep it in its proper perspective it's very very important to do that uh, so just always remember that I love y'all team keep it clean y'all are very very great people but special shout out special special shout out uh, to my guy Herb and his family I love y'all team keep it clean and just like the Baltimore Ravens were yesterday when it came to being in the win column haha <laughs> we out